We're gonna get rid of the pot. Today's the day we're gonna make the biggest changes. Sometimes your life changes and it's time to reconsider what you've done. And as we get older, we're definitely reconsidering some of our decisions. And also, I have a desire to grow more food and gain space so that my mom can sit outside when it's April, which is the only sun hits in one spot here in my backyard. And I think we need to make changes to make a lot of these things happen. We're gonna get rid of the pond. It's gonna be hard work. I'm not looking forward to picking up all the stones, but we're gonna get it done. So I'm gonna show you first the process I went through to figure out my why. And that starts with understanding what my needs are in order to meet my goals. So if you're thinking of renovating your yard or changing a section of your yard, really understand what you're doing it and what you need to get from it. It is hard sometimes to make changes because you love something so much, but for us, it needs to happen. I'm gonna share with you exactly the process I went through to go ahead and understand exactly what we need so we don't have to make changes again. Maybe I can help you with that. Let me show you. This is a free garden planner that I have linked below that you can use to design any corner of your garden or your entire garden if you want. But this is exact process that I take every time I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment to what I want to experience in the garden. This is probably the most critical thing you can ever do if you're going to plan your garden. I have a video that will show you also how to design your garden beds. And that way you will understand exactly how the two areas link with each other. So I will link it below and at the end of this video and you can see step by step how I design a space and how you can incorporate the things that you love to make it work for a better garden experience. The introduction is really to make you understand that you have to stay organized so that you won't feel stressed. It makes it so much easier and more enjoyable to be able to organize your thoughts and know exactly where you're going. So go ahead and find a cozy space so that you can begin journaling and coming up with the design ideas that will be amazing and you will always want to experience over and over again. The biggest goal that you can have is to stay focused because if you are feeling like you are going to be completely overwhelmed through the process, you're never going to stay focused and be able to plan and meet your goals. But I'm going to try to make it really easy for you. So if you get this garden planner, make sure that you read these instructions before you start putting anything on paper. The biggest challenge is that we need to be realistic. So you can design a garden or a little spot in your garden where you can have the experience you want, but you can make it happen so you don't procrastinate and not be able to create that beautiful space that you're looking forward to. The best method when you embrace the journey is because at the end you will not feel overwhelmed and you'll have clear goals that are manageable and are going to be able to be accomplished. This is the page where you don't think about things too much. Just let anything that you're thinking out and put it down in paper where there's bullet points, paragraphs, whatever you need. For me, I did some bullet points and I said that I want to bring nature in. I wanted to feel nurturing. I want to have a space where I connect with family. And I definitely, and my husband would agree, wanted something that was super easy to maintain. So I have three words that I'm going to keep thinking of every time I'm starting to design the space. And that is that I wanted more food. I want it to be easy and I want a little corner to enjoy doing different tasks that I have to do each day in the garden. Once you have everything out and you have sort of a more defined experience that you want to have in that space, then you go ahead and put the goals. What are the things that you want to accomplish in that space? 
for me on this space, I need to remove the pond. I want to add a sitting area. I want to add a working area where I can dry flowers and herbs. I want a low maintenance type of space. I want it to feel zen and feel the sun and the warmth and my mom to be able to experience that. And at the same time, I need a space that feels soft so that I have a corner where it's not all about work. Now that we have all of what we need in information wise that will make us feel connected, this is when you get into your goals, your to-do list, and you know exactly what you want to accomplish in that space. You can even make it in phases. You don't have to do it all at once. I jot down just some words to help me with what I'm going to accomplish on this sketch. I want a new pond, I know I want a sitting area, and a new garden bed. But I also going to make this connected to something that I want to feel. So I know I want a cozy space, very zen feeling, and I want it to be super simple. Cozy when it comes to materials, rocks, bamboo. Zen when it's connected to nature. It means just a lot to me to feel connected. And I want simple materials. So I don't want to be overwhelmed with different things. I want it to visually feel like one statement. Super, super simple. Go ahead and sketch now the idea that you have. Just let it flow. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm making this really rough and I want to just get my ideas down on paper and see what's going to work and how I can bring this whole thing together. I start with the existing fence on the back and then I have the house itself, which is where the kitchen is. There you go out to a patio and on the right side is the living room. The living room has these windows and it's all windows on the back wall. So I know that I want to keep that view going the way I did it when I had the pond. The view will be centered on that window. That's where the pond, the new location is going to be. It doesn't matter if it's in ground or outside. I want it to be aligned with the window so that when I look out, there's sort of this reading. That is the most difficult part. I already know where my pond is going to be. But I also need to make sure that even though I know it's center, I understand what's in the space. So go ahead and draw the things that are there and have to remain in your space. Take into account whether it's a little hedge, a tree, a bush, a retaining wall, anything that you have that is existing, go ahead and sketch it down. Just sketch it. You don't have to measure anything. Just make sure that it's counted for. I'm drawing the pond location, a hedge that I have to the right. I know that I want to go ahead and have the table right in front. I was thinking I was going to have a garden bed in front, but I think having the table makes more sense. So this is a very relaxing sort of location. And then I have a new garden bed to the right. And the garden bed is going to be pretty close to the one that I have there, that other round garden bed that I have to the right. I think I'm going to leave like 12 to 15 inches because I can reach without any issue if I have to harvest or maintain anything in there. And I'm just drawing the tree that I have in the corner, retaining wall, and the existing Vigo bed that is to the right is a long bed. And also the path. I have a path that goes down that space and I want to make sure that I know where that is. I will be transitioning materials from the path, concrete papers, to gravel. So I have to make sure that I understand how the space lays out so that it's really smooth from one transition where you're walking to the next one. Go ahead and label every element so that you know what it is and you can go back and sort of look at it and see if it makes you feel good the way it's laid out or you need to make any changes to it or adjustments. Make sure that the spaces between each element, so from the pond to the table, from the table to the gravel path, and then the gravel path to the pavers, everything has enough space. I think it's important after you do the really quick sketch that you sort of measure your yard and kind of put little blocks and figure out how that may work. If you have no clearance that is just easy to get around, it's going to be really uncomfortable. And I know in a small garden, 
it's really hard because you want to use every single square inch that you have. But do make sure that you have enough clearance to get around the space. It will make for a much better experience every single day. In here, I made sure behind the pond, I left around 18 inches to 20 inches so that I could get around on the back and maintain whatever I needed on the back. So the hedge trimming it or anything back there, or if anything goes wrong with the pond itself, I can get all the way around this and be able to maintain it. So now that you have the pieces all together, the pond, the table, your garden beds, and you know that everything fits, you've already dimensioned to see if things are working really well. You have your space that works and you know as you are designing the spaces that the views are clear the view from your patio where you sit on your sofa is clear you can see the pond and the same from the living room the view from the living room as you approach the window that is clear also now you have the space with your garden beds to grow food you have plenty of those and you have your sitting area, you have your path clear that you won't be struggling. You know you have a space that works and now make it a reality. Go ahead and make as many notes as you need on this space and go ahead and update your list if you have to. A quick sketch will change the outcome of whatever you're gonna do. It doesn't have to be complicated. It just has to meet those goals that at the end you have below cozy, zen, and simple for this one sketch. I hope that this planner helps you create the garden of your dreams. First, let's go over some materials. The first one is I am going to be using a water trough. This kind of water trough will be transformed. Wait until you see it. I am adding a stone water feature, but no, you don't have to do this. If you want to save money, you can use one of those solar water features, little water fountains, and that will work and look beautiful. We're going to be reusing the existing materials, like the one by one concrete pavers, some of the flactones that were around the pond, and also cobblestones to decorate and any type of stone that you like to add some layers to the pond look. We use gravel and some weed barrier and a leveler. One important aspect that I want to reuse a lot of these materials, and I do want to save some money on some of the things that I add to the pond. One of them is I'm going to be using a bamboo screen, and this will really help elevate the look of this pond. Now removing all of the stones and all of the succulents that were on the ground was the biggest job. I lifted so many stones for days, but you have to really clean the surface that you're going to use, have it all clean and also leveled so that the new pond can be level when it's installed and you won't run into any problems. We started cleaning, then we started dismantling the pond and moving the fish that we had. We wanted to incorporate them into the new water feature. And as we ended up discovering our fish and how many new ones we had, we also found a little friend we named Fred. This little frog was the cutest. We were hoping he was gonna stay around. He's all orange underneath, bright orange. He's absolutely so cute. The other thing that took the longest was filling up the hole. We filled up the part that's darker with some branches that we cut whilst we're doing the spring cleaning, but the part where the pond is gonna go, we filled with dirt and we really compacted this soil so that even though it's going to settle, it won't settle too much with the weight. We did reuse a lot of the stones and we ended up, the stones we were not going to use, we used them on the pathway in the secret garden. This is where we're building the pathway to be nice and clean and we have our little mini orchard with our apple trees and our peach trees which are doing amazing. Look at all those flowers. I cannot wait to see if this will bloom. The miniature or dwarf peach trees are doing fantastic. Now it's time to start laying the foundation and that's where we use some sand to go ahead and level where we're gonna put the pavers. The first layers is the pavers and then we'll be putting the flagstones on top. And the reason that we did this is because if the ground starts settling, which is totally normal for it to happen, 
then we wanted to go ahead and be sure that as the pavers sink, the flaxstones will stay on the surface and hold the pond always leveled and nothing will be shifted later on. This leveler was so handy. You can scrape the sand to make it as level as possible and be able to kind of see if the whole thing was leveled or not. You gotta do it horizontal and vertical also in both directions to make sure it's completely flat. And then I went ahead and placed the one by one concrete pavers. These were inside the pond and this is what it held the big water feature in the middle. So we were happy to be able to use some of those. We couldn't use all of them, but we used quite a few of them. This took a little effort, but once we did one layer, since the water trough is six feet long, we went ahead and did six tiles. And then we did a second layer below where my husband is pouring the sand. And then on top of that, we added the flagstone. We ended up deciding to move this rose tree that we love because it needed to get sun and it was gonna be behind the water trough. So right now it's doing really well, which I was concerned about. These are the flagstones we placed on top. So we just wanted to soften the look of the pavers and you'll see how we dress this up so that the flagstones are part of the whole look. But everything, I will say again, needs to be very level. Take your time doing the foundation. It's just like building a house and then everything else will go really well. Then the fish, we went ahead and added the fish back to the pond. We used the same water that was on the pond so they would be acclimated. Once we installed the water trough, I ended up adding all of the stones. We did pebbles on the outside and then started adding the larger stones against the water trough. And you'll see I left a little gap between the stones and the water trough. You'll see why I did that and it's so that the layer that I was gonna add to the water trough would fit right behind them. If you have found value on this video so far, please give it a thumbs up so we can reach more cozy gardeners. Adding the stones brings nature into the look of your pond. We ended up adding a wood barrier in front of the pond and then some gravel just to have a smooth surface that will be adding the seating area I showed you right in front. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Melba and I love to grow as much as I can in food and flowers in my cozy, tiny backyard. And if you're back, I want to thank you so much for the support of the channel. This is when the small details make a big difference if you're designing a little piece in your garden that you want to transform in an economical way. I got this bamboo screen, it was an 8x16 foot bamboo screen and I needed to cut it to the height of the water trough. I wanted to hide the lip because if you don't hide it, then that's visible and it takes away. Those are the small details that make a big difference. So make sure you measure all the way to the top and that's where you're gonna start cutting your screen. Measure the screen, the 24 inch height that is the water trough, and then just cut, put a few points up and down the screen and use your cutters to go ahead and cut all the way along the 16 feet. You're gonna use the whole thing and wrap it all around the water trough. Take your time doing this so that the line is as straight as possible. That way you will have a clean look on the surface right at the edge of the water trough. We've inserted the water feature and you can see the screen is tucked behind the rocks. I left a little gap. Now that the screen is on, I'm going to tie it up with the twine. And the twine is just going to give a little accent on the look of the pond, but it's not going to completely hold it. 
You will see later on how I end up holding the screen in place so that it's taut. I did 16 feet of twine, a little over that, maybe 17 feet, and doubled it. So there's a little more visibility to the twine that you put around the pond to hold part of the bamboo in place. That way it's a little more decorative and not just a line that is there holding something. The next stem is I place the same twine doubled up on the bottom. And as long as these two lines are straight, they're okay. It may not be seen in the future when I add the detail. And just cut the ends to finish it off. I needed to add some extra layers and I added a flagstone on one side of the pond and then this container that was in the old pond and I'm gonna be dressing this up later on with larger succulents and make it look a little better. It is important to anchor your water feature. So if you're using something like a water trough that's so plain, give it a couple of layers that way it becomes a statement in the garden. There are ways to make your space look bigger. And you know that my garden, if you've seen it before, is super tiny. So I wanted to add scale to the garden and to the area. So for me, the way to do that was to add the bamboo screen on the back wall. That worked really well because it made the picture that you're looking at not only the pond, but the entire space making it visually more appealing and also just seem grandeur of a statement. So if you're looking to go ahead and make your space look bigger or a small area look bigger, the material you choose, make it work on the foreground and on the background, or at least stay very similar on both so that you can make it look really nice and connected. This way, the whole thing becomes one element, the water feature and the back wall versus only the water feature having a background wall that has no reference or attachment to it. One of the best ways to connect the garden is always to use the stones. As you know, I love them and I found a great way to make them work to hold the screen and also become a decorative piece. So let me show you how I did it. Once you have all the elements put together, move the rocks against the screen and add stones to go on top until it goes almost a third of the way that way it holds the bamboo screen in place without you having to glue it if you do it too low it's going to start coming out on the top of the water feature so you want it to push it all the way up about a third of the way and that will hold the bamboo screen in place without having to use any glue or anything else that with the weather may wear off We added shelves, which is an upside down pot with a flat piece of flagstone, and we will be putting plants when they are available here. It is still too cold and they're not being sold at the moment. But I will show you exactly how it looks next time I have it all done. When you look at the finishing touches, add your larger stones on the corners. So both sides here, I'll add two layers of large stones and then I added one or two on the left side. That way it contains the picture. And then I went ahead and added a pot with some type of plant. This is a miniature Japanese maple. This frames the picture because it has the same sort of softness and movement that the water has. This sort of attaches the layers and makes your eye jump from one element to another. There is the rose that I transplanted and now it's doing so much better. I cut the tops and it's looking fabulous. On the left side, I added more stones, a small sculpture and also a solar light. And this is on my Amazon store. I added also a path to be able to maintain it. And you can see this is the stone that was a water feature before. I placed it on the background so that it really stands out as a large stone and attaches again visually to the pond itself. I can now maintain this and the Clematis is super happy because it has shade on the roots and plenty of sun on the top. So it's doing really, really well, flowering like crazy. 
I want to go over some things about the bamboo and that is that I bought this bamboo at Home Depot. Now the quality is not the greatest, it's really thin and it may last like a couple of seasons. I did order one from Amazon but it was probably 70 something dollars and the one at Home Depot was 25, 26 dollars I think. So I ended up opting to buy this one and just try this and see how it looked. But there's a lot of different bamboos from all different price points. Some are darker, some are thicker, thinner. So you can just create your own look with the type of bamboo that you buy. Mm -hmm. 